Uh, hey everyone, I'm Dilip Karpur, so Staff Product Manager at Qualcomm, representing software ecosystem for compute products. And I'm Gaurav Goyal, I am App Compact Engineering Lead for compute platforms, so working with the many ISPs for Windows, bringing uh, Windows experience on ARM. Yeah. So, um, to start off, right, so let's um, see what matters most to the developers, so performance. So Snapdragon X Elite um, is the performance leader for Windows, right? Like if you look at the graph, what I'm showing right now, Snapdragon actually delivers up to 52% faster CPU performance when compared to competition. And not just that, our competition requires double the power in order to achieve exactly the same kind of performance. So what we are talking here is just not the benchmarks, it's about the real world efficiency. So whether you're compiling code, running inference, or even running emulators, Snapdragon gives you the most performance per watt, which actually means faster workflows for developers and longer battery life. Now, one thing is talking about the performance when plugged, but think about it when you're actually unplugged and you're running on the battery, right? So you can see here how we are faring against different benchmarks against our competition. In one of the use, in one of the benchmarks, you can see the competition is like 54% down on the performance. But Snapdragon stays consistent throughout all these benchmarks. This is what separates us out from the competition, right? So again, uh, depending on these developer use cases, whether you are compiling, rendering, or running AI workloads, Snapdragon delivers desktop class performance. So without needing uh, to be tethered to a charger. So this is actually a game changer for developers developing on Windows on Snapdragon. Now coming to 2024, uh, it was a transformational year for native apps and Snapdragon tools on Snapdragon, oh, sorry, developer tools on Snapdragon. To start off with the developer tool ecosystem, a lot of your favorite apps such as, you know, it may be Qt or Visual Studio or um, talking about um, uh, Unreal Engine, all these have been made native, so you get the best developer experience on our platform. What we also found out is that, you know, people who are using our platform, 93% of the time, they're using these native apps. So they are making the best use of our platform right now. Along with that, today, all the ISVs, we have like 50 plus NPU powered AI features that are in production and running smoothly on Windows on Snapdragon. The story what we are trying to paint here is that, look, the developer ecosystem has evolved over the past two years and we are heading in the right way. And this is exactly what we want to tell to our developers is that, hey, this is the right time for you to go and start developing on our platform. To talk in detail about all the developer tools that are existing, I would like to call upon Gaurav and he'll go through all the developer tools in detail for you. Yeah, thanks, Philip, uh, for introducing the greatness and power, performance, per, per what, uh, but I will now I'll go through the how you can use this platform. What is the, there? How to use it? I mean, mm -hmm. bringing a IP is one thing, but how to use and how to playing around with this uh, second thing. So uh, we are like uh, happy to tell you about that. Like, we have like uh, all compilers, like you can name it, like Visual C++, Clang, uh, LLVM, GCC. All you can use as a native or cross compile uh, your like uh, code for the for ARM as well. And IDEs like we are, we are, you can think about Visual Studio 2022 natively supporting. Currently, you can even have uh, Visual Studio code uh, also running natively on our platform. Similarly, for runtime SDKs like .NET 6, 7, 8, all are working on uh, native uh, on ARM. A Java side, like open JDK is 17 plus support uh, uh, ARM platform. Python 3.11 onwards have dedicated ARM support around that. Sorry. Even Go, uh, native Windows on Snapdragon support is a great CLI tool, which is already part of the native ecosystem. So we have, you are all, uh, covered for the compiler on the, all the tool chain side as of now. So you're ready to build, what next? So it, it will. Hmm? What next? So now you're ready, you, you build the platform. Now you're ready to test, debug, and try the performance of it. So 
here also we are cover your your mainly cover like all the debugging tools visual studio debugger win dbg uh, debugger we vc code uh, with gdbs and also recently lot of act trace 32 is also enabled on windows platform now so you, you are well covered around that for using this as a debugging platform even for emulation side and virtualization perspective like uh, microsoft provided prism emulator so you don't even need to compile your apps on our platform uh, if you really want to use them you can use the x86 compiled apps on our platform and, and most of the time if you are using user mode drivers you will be all okay only the kernel mode drivers where you have to start compiling on our platform similarly if you have a combination of dependencies which are which you want to move to arm which you have or, or your lot of dependency which are working in x86 so there's a platform arm ec compilation so you have, you can bring your app faster onto the market and you can uh, slowly keep on building on your uh, native attachment to bring the performance on the house similarly wsl is all that like your virtualization is windows and uh, linux you can start using it from day one it's all supported up to now so this is like your you you have debugging testing covered now how to optimize performance so as bleep was mentioning earlier that this is a powerful platform we have a powerful cpu we have npu and gpu is also catching up and we have lot of hardware codecs accelerator uh, supported in this platform so you can continue to utilize these uh, industry leading npu for 45 tops now and which will keep on increasing with the each generation and also uh, gpu like most of the frameworks like opencl uh, vulkan uh, they are already natively supporting today sickle is coming up very pretty soon similarly on the hardware codec side we have like all the major uh, playback codecs are supported and even for video editing we are bringing our stack pretty fast and on top of that i mean if you really want to see like there are lot of uh, open source libraries has been converted to arm and optimized for our platform which brings like a performance advantage if you want to use them and build your app open source or any closed source app for that matter so that gives a complete picture of performance improvement on your platform which you can utilize which might you might be leaving on the table if you don't continue to use it so that's the great opportunity you already have right now available to you so now this is all thing which is uh, we developed over time so if you can see like the open source and framework ecosystem is already developing and as part of that if you see the lot of uh, popular open source project like uh, tensorflow pytorch like 2.7 have native support now already announced last last week open cv is supported for a while uh, we have electron chromium all are running native on our platform similarly node js if you want to use it, that is also natively supported popular libraries if you uh, think about ffmpeg vlc 7zip they all are natively supported and even utilizing qualcomm hardware uh, to get the best performance out of this handbrake we are like uh, not leaving any performance gap at all so that giving us very great advantage if you are looking for emulation side uh, if the emulation and virtualized strategy like dotnet maui and win ui they are all well covered uh, android studio and flutter are catching up pretty soon on our platform uh, docker desktop is already supported so you can think about it like all the ecosystem is all already catch lot in last two or three years when these platforms are coming up they are all ready similarly for development to uh, libraries uh, we have all cmake uh, conan all are covered python ecosystem is already caught up we have open uh, blast libraries uh, scipy uh, numpy all are well established as of today wheels are coming up pretty fast and on top of that the one of the major complaint was okay you can build it but now how to continuously integrate and develop uh, on our platform so that uh, microsoft is already start supporting from the last month a ci enablement for all these uh, apps on their azure platform so now you do, you don't have any limitation you don't need to pay anything to any uh, ci system so you are all ready for developing all this on your platform so with that in mind like i think uh, the whole ecosystem is already developed right now and based on that if you uh, 
if you see, we have like almost 35 million apps in the uh, in uh, Intel ecosystem or x86 ecosystem, if you want to call it. And out of that, 2,000 apps Qualcomm has validated by the themselves and bringing the platform uh, on ARM. And it's, it doesn't mean that only 2,000 works. I mean, that's the critical ones we tested. And out of that, 750 plus are natively supported on our platform and utilizing the greatness of the platform. And on top of that, uh, Microsoft has provided a telemetry data that 93% of the uh, apps are running natively on our platform whenever they are running on this. So that's a great improvement. And it's not like only uh, like uh, North American apps are coming up, like Japan, Korea, all are catching up pretty fast. With that, I will hand over to Dilip and bring uh, AI uh, tooling yes. strategy around. Yeah. Thank you, Gaurav. Yeah. Um, so what Gaurav just gave you the picture was all about the different kinds of tools and ecosystem that are available in our uh, Snapdragon whole developer tooling, right? So I want to touch upon AI, which is also a very critical part of our, our tooling system. So we first talked about all the debuggers, compilers, but then now we are also into the AI side. So AI stack, Qualcomm AI stack is what we believe uh, to be complete unified stack for any developers to go and develop AI on our system. Um, it starts from all the frameworks that we support, be it TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, and we have this dedicated AI runtimes, be it AI Engine Direct or uh, Qualcomm Neural Processing SDK, even Onyx runtime. And we also support the AI Foundry that was just uh, released yesterday. All these are coming together and we support all the profilers and debuggers and compilers for these AI models to be running on our platform, right? So this is the complete AI ecosystem that we are trying to build for Windows on Snapdragon. And we just don't want to stop there, right? So we are continuously working with our next generation ISVs, are working on some of the agentic AI use cases. That also includes all our partners like Olama, LM Studio, um, anything LLM. All these partners are actually giving us um, direct access to our NPUs and CPUs and GPUs to run some of your favorite models on our devices. Now, having said that, um, with all the tools and things that we discussed, uh, I'm going to demo where we are using all these tools together. Um, and I'm using local AI Foundry that was released yesterday to show our AI translation app. Uh, let me just um, switch and go through the demo. Awesome. Uh, so what you see here is um, the code where I've written for um, AI translation and I've used um, Langchain, which is an open source uh, tool. And I've also used sp uh, speech to text. Uh, I'm using Grad.io for um, UI, quick UI. So that's been super useful to do that. And I'm using Foundry Local uh, to call a model. So here in the terminal, let me show you, um, I'm actually running a Foundry model, which is a DeepSeq R17B. And you can see here, it is actually supporting for QNN on NPU. And uh, I'm just trying to compile the code where uh, what it will do is it will try to load the model DeepSeq R1 on that. And here you can see it is running on the local server 7860. So let me open that local server, refresh it. So this, this is what um, the local AI translation app looks like, right? So let me just put it here. Tell me how to get a Qualcomm party tonight at Museum of Pop. So if you guys didn't know about it, there is a party happening tonight. So <laughs> um, everybody is welcome and um, once you click on the translate here, this is where the DeepSeq model is being used. And here you can see the NPU, which is used for this translation to happen. So all this is happening on device without uh, any need of the internet. So I'm also using speech to text where it converts this whole thing to the speech and you can listen to this. Ir al party de Voy en el Museo de la Pop. Okay. I, I can play. ¿Cómo puedo ir al party de Voy en el Museo de la Pop? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, this was the demo uh, to show the AI Foundry and everything else. Um, I know we are out of time, but um, one last slide that I wanted to show is, you know, to get started on Windows on Snapdragon, there is a Windows on Snapdragon website, developer site, where you want to go and start exploring all our resources. And um, tomorrow we have a bunch of workshops and we have devices in our uh, lab. So please do come for these workshops, sign up, so you can try our devices hands-on. So with that, we just completed our session. Thank you. Thank you.